In addition to being a usual video for this channel, this video is part of an A-B test video pair to see which version viewers like and which ones they don't. While you don't have to watch the video twice, I'd love to know which version you prefer. Like this one if you prefer its presentation and filming style, or click the other one, click the link above my finger, if you prefer that. And thanks for helping pick our best presentation style moving forwards. Uh, just so that you know, our weekend roundup will likely still be in the studio for now, or whichever one of these you will prefer. I've got a question for you. What are you doing this Saturday? If you're like me, then the chances are that you'll start by catching up on some sleep, then take care of the usual weekend errands, and maybe do something fun with friends or family. But I'm also pretty sure that those things will involve the use of your own car at some point. How much car use? Well, that depends on what you're doing and where you're going. Personally, my weekends either result in me not using my car at all, or they result in me using my car a whole lot more than I would, heading over to some event or other with a local charity that I help run. But this coming Saturday, that's September 22nd, is World Car Free Day, and I figured that it would make some sense to tell you a little bit about it. No, don't turn off, I know. This is a site devoted to cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation, and for the majority of the people watching this, that, to them, translates to electric cars. But here's the thing. While there's growing consensus that electric cars are better for the environment than internal combustion engine vehicles and will continue to improve their carbon emissions thanks to the way that the electricity grid is getting ever cleaner, replacing an internal combustion engine car with a plug-in one does nothing to tackle some of the biggest challenges facing our modern world, congestion and our increasingly unhealthy way of living. So I want to ask you a simple question on a more daily basis. Can you leave the car at home and travel a different way for short trips? Could you walk, cycle, use public transport? That's what World Car Free Day is about. It's a day when we try alternatives to the vehicles that we've all become over-dependent on, reducing congestion, improving air quality, and hopefully increasing our social, mental, and physical well-being. And if you can, I'd love you to try it out for yourself. I'm not talking about staying at home and not using your car either, no. I'm talking about getting out and about and doing the kind of things that you usually might do, just not with your car if you don't need to. Granted, there are some things that you can't do easily without your personal transport, but with half of all trips in the US being under three miles in length, 72% of those trips being driven in some way, and 60% of those trips being less than a mile in length and still driven in a private vehicle, we all need to sit down and have a think about just how much we really need to use our cars. World Car Free Day may just be a day or a weekend in some places, but the idea is that you not only dump your car for a day, but you also use those experiences to shape how you commute and travel in the future. Work with your friends, your colleagues or your neighbours to see what the world could be like if you left the car in the garage for your short trips and only used it for longer trips, trips longer than five or ten miles in length, for example. And if you don't have a bike, get a bike or a decent pair of comfortable walking shoes as well as maybe a coat if you live in certain areas. I personally walk three miles a day despite driving to the office and I love it. It lets me focus on my day ahead or reflect on the day I've just had, gets my blood pumping and gives me time to listen to music or a good audiobook. And when I can, I try and take the bike for short trips. Although I'll admit, not as much as I should. I know, I get it. If you don't live in certain major cities or certain countries around the world, using public transport is a nightmare. But by using a bike or walking that short distance, you're dramatically reducing the strain on the road network and dramatically improving your own personal health too. I understand that not everyone lives in a bicycle friendly city, but unless the way you want to go is along a major road and there's no cycle lane and there's no alternative route that you can use, there's usually a way around it. Even if you're going further, you may find that bicycles and public transit work well together, especially if you're in the suburbs or live within easy reach of a train station. For example, here in Portland, most, if not all, public buses have bicycle racks on the front, while our light rail and streetcar systems let you hop on with your bicycle in tow. Don't have a bike? Some major cities have bike share schemes that allow you to rent a bike by the hour or by the minute to try it out, such as the Bike Town program here in Portland. Other cities operate scooter share schemes which, while less good for you on a health level, can still dramatically improve congestion and thus air quality in large cities. Staying on the two-wheel front, if you're worried about being physically capable of cycling, then you'll be glad to know that electric bikes are now far more affordable and far more capable than they once were. 
Depending on where you live, these will either assist you while you pedal up to a set speed, usually 50 miles per hour or about 24 kph, or they'll be capable of providing full power without pedaling, according to regs, although you will want to pedal to get the quoted range per charge. Want a mic of your own and you can't afford a new one or you don't want to pay a lot for one? Well, you'll also find in many places that there are bicycle cooperatives or charities that operate as non-profit to help you find a cheap but reliable bicycle and teach you how to maintain them. Using cars less is something I've been thinking about for a while, and this upcoming event has given me a polite nudge. This might surprise you, but I grew up in a carless household and didn't pass my driving test until I was 22. Until that point, I was cycling 50 miles a day between schools in my job as a peripatetic teacher, complete with a trailer full of musical instruments. I'll admit, though, that while I like cycling and want to cycle more, I don't think I'd go back to that level of being car free. But as always, every little bit helps. So go on, tell me how you're going to spend the day being car free. I'd love to hear your experiences and stories. And if you have tips for how other people can make use of their cars less and make their transportation choices even smarter and greener, then tell us them in the comments below. That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Subscribe to both of our channels. And if you fancy it, support us by using one of the two links below or by buying something from our shop. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep evolving.